Hi everybody, this is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals and here we go. We're, we're getting ready to do X on our weekly um, Jesus Art Journal Challenge. And I always look back at what I did the week before. So I'll move my plastic covers. There's from last week. And my coral did show up after it dried. Um, so that is from last week. So this week is X. And so, as you can imagine, there's not very many things in the Bible that starts with X. But I thought about how, okay, so when I was in high school, <laughs> uh, I saw Xmas. And I was like, and I was a new Christian. And I was like, oh, how dare they replace the name of uh, Christ in Christmas with an X. And I, I'd seen other people that, you know, people were mad about it at different places. And I'd heard comments. Anyway, so then I find out a few years later that actually the reason it, it came about was that X means Christ. And so when they did the Xmas, it's a symbol of the cross, which means Christ. And so it means Christmas. It's kind of like the fish as a symbol for Christians. And... So here's a ancient uh, stone carving of the X and P, which in Greek, the first letter in the Greek word Christos is X. And then the next one is P, and it forms a Christogram. It says a symbol of Christ. So this explains it. Here's a symbol of what it is in Greek. And how Christos relates to that, and Christos is Christ. And, oh, you know what? Here's a, here is a scripture that actually went with the veil. Yeah, that's when the veil was, <laughs> so I completely missed that scripture when I did my veil one, but that's okay. I had plenty to put on my veil. So, um, anyway... <laughs> So we're going to go on with uh, X. This is for your Y page. So, so I'm going to cut that off and put that with my Y. And so I'm going to go ahead and draw my two prompts. So there's not a lot to work with this week as far as, you know, things that I've supplied for you. Add a bird. All right. And add thread. Okay. And wow, so X, Y, how did I end up, that's weird. I've only got three prompts left and I need four to finish. I didn't think I threw that any away except for the black and white. Okay, anyway, I'll deal with that when I come to it. So those are my prompts for this week. And I'm gonna cut these out and get my journals ready and then I will be back. Okay. I've got everything situated. It's actually the next day, and I have thought about this a little bit. And I'm gonna let the prompt prompts <laughs> direct the small one, which is add a bird and add thread. So I went over to my sewing machine and pulled some thread out of the trash. And I'm going to use that for texture on the background. Hopefully that will work. And add a bird was another one. So I'm going to decoupage a bird. I'm also going to use the, the little picture that I gave you on the, on the Etsy files on this one, I think. Hope everything fits. That bird actually fits better. Let's see. Maybe I'll use this one. This looks like he could be on the side over here without too much <laughs> problem. Let's see. Okay, so if I put this here, the, the, the trouble is finding room for everything. And I'm going to put an X, not this one, but I'll put an X on here. And then I need probably X is for Christ. Maybe X means Christ on this one. So it's uh, pretty full as far as graphics and things. So 
I think that will work. I'm going to go ahead and I think the first thing, I think the first thing is I'm going to put the bird on. So that's just a decoupaging and let me get my little brush out here and wake it up with some water, at least enough to where I can put some glue on the page. And leave room at the top for my letter. So I've been doing a Bible study. I'm doing actually several Bible studies, but one of them I'm doing is on prayer by Kenneth Hagin. That's the prayer book. We're doing the prayer book by Kenneth Hagin uh, study course book. And then we're doing the faith one. And the prayer one yesterday was on casting your cares. And in this time that we're going through in life, <laughs> in the world, I think it's a critical, critical thing. And he was really strong about it. He was saying, basically, it's a sin to worry. And that you are, the Bible says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. So he takes your cares and he takes care of them. And Kenneth Hagin was making the point that if you take them back, <clears throat> God can't do anything with them. And uh, it was really great Bible study and one that I needed to hear. <laughs> and he said, the way you can tell if you've taken, if you've taken your cares back from the Lord is if you're tossing and turning at night, thinking of solutions to a problem or, you know, just you can't eat because your stomach's upset because of worry about a situation or uh, anything like that. That means you've taken it back from the Lord. So I thought that was a great, I was happy that he gave us guidelines of how to tell because, you know, sometimes you think, well, I did give that to the Lord, but yeah, except then you picked it back up. So <laughs> that was valuable. And I keep talking about these studies, but I'm telling you, if you haven't done them, they're on Amazon. You can buy the used ones and, um, uh, Let's see, I think I want to use, I'm going to use my matte gel medium for the thread. I don't know if that's the right decision, but that's what I'm going to do. And um, you can get the used ones on Amazon. And we still have a couple of them that we haven't done yet that we're, the, we're, several of us are super excited about. The Holy Spirit and uh, Healing are the other two that we haven't done. But the faith one and the prayer one are awesome. Okay, so this is the thread. And so I am just going to let it be the texture. And it's kind of cool because it was in the trash. Wasn't going to do anything. And here it is getting used. So, Okay. And then I'm going to put this on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use the same, uh, this uh, medium for that. Just kind of butter it like a piece of toast <laughs> with this medium. Hopefully not thick as... It makes a mess. I'm gonna put that actually in this corner down here, just so I have as much room as I can possibly have. And then I'm gonna take a paper towel and press this down. And then I need, X means Christ, and I need to put that on there. So this is one that's less about color, obviously, and more about texture. I mean, from a design standpoint. So it's just nice to have that variety, I think. Ooh, that was kind of a big X, but oh well. Okay. 
that is a giant X. <laughs> Get it down off the blue tape. Okay, so there is that one. And I, I'll clean it up when it's dry. And then we're gonna do the big one. And as I was thinking about this, I just kept thinking about Christmas because that's the only place I've ever seen the X used for Christ. And so I'm going to do red. Um, I'm gonna do sort of a Christmas feel, I think. Uh, Christmas, Christmassy. And the funny thing is I don't really have a Christmassy red paint because I don't use bright red that often, but this one is as close as I come. Well, that looks pretty red. Okay, so um, a fairly big brush. I didn't have the video on and so I'm using my fine line applicator and my white uh, acrylic ink and I'm just repeating the phrase X means Christ kind of staggering the words so they don't all line up at the same time and I suddenly realized it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> shooting a video let's see Okay, so I'm just creating a pattern, a pattern background out of the words. So I'm gonna let that dry and then I will come back and put the words on. Okay, I'm back and it is dry. And so there it is for better or worse. <laughs> and I'm gonna go ahead now and just glue my things on So if nothing else, I'm enjoying the fact that these are all different. Every single letter has <laughs> a different direction, pretty much. So that's that's cool. All right, so I'm just going to use my glitter glue. And glue over this background. And let's see. So I'm going to put that there. Glue these over here on the side. Okay, this seems a little plain. So I'm going to cut, I think, a piece of felt. It's the only thing I have in, that's even close to a Christmas green. And so, Nothing on this play page says Christmas, except the colors, of course. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and carry it out. Okay, so that's gonna take some Fabri-Tac to glue that down. Okay, so that 
is enough of that. I'm gonna go back to my our glitter glue for the rest of it. Oh boy, I got this wrong. This this has to go above this. Oh boy. Okay. X is. Ah. Uh, oh well. I can pull that up. Oh, uh, not without leaving a mess underneath. Oh well. gonna have to let it be messy just a sh tiny shift so I can cover up that glue that I just put down oh okay and that's why I try not to cut these apart too quickly like a little at a time so I don't lose my place because it's super easy to do. And so it just goes on to say that this is a, has been used for over a thousand years as an acceptable way to abbreviate Christ. And then this part here says Christmas or Xmas is an example most people are familiar with. And then it goes on to talk about how it's used with XP sometimes. It says it's often seen with a P, the second letter in the word Christos, to form a Christogram, a symbol of Christ. And that's what was on the other picture that I put in the kit on Etsy, the picture I put on the small one of that stone XP from a church in Greece, I believe. Okay, all right, so there's that. And we did our X. And when I started, I wasn't sure what in the world I'd do for X, so there it is. <laughs> God provided, and let's see. Okay, and here's the small one, X means Christ. And so that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you guys and hope you'll join me on this. Uh, we had somebody come on the Facebook group that just this week and show her very first one, her A. So it's if you haven't started, come on along and play the game and come on the group on Facebook and put a picture of it on there so we can see what you're doing. And I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye.